In Lab 3, you will use the DC power supply and the DMM to measure values of voltage and current in several circuits. There are three main parts to Lab 5. First, you will build a voltage dividing circuit. Notice in this circuit that the resistors in series will divide the voltage rise that is produced by this voltage supply. Second, you will measure currents in this circuit. Notice that the resistor branches in parallel will divide the source current. And in the third part of the lab, you will build a Wheatstone bridge circuit to measure a very small resistance. Build the circuit of figure one on your breadboard. It's a best practice to make your circuit look like the schematic that you've drawn so that you can easily set up the measurements with the correct direction and polarity. Also, debugging becomes easier should it come to that. This practice will save you time in the long run. Set up the 25 volt power supply to deliver 15 volts and limit the current to 100 milliamp. This is a good practice and a safety feature to reduce the chance that you will accidentally blow the fuse in the ammeter. Based on this circuit, we expect that the resistor load will draw around 16 milliamps, so the limit of 100 milliamps will never be reached. Turn the power output on. Measure the voltage with the DMM, making it a point to measure the correct polarity. Place the red probe at the positive point and the black probe at the negative point in your schematic. Record your data in your lab book. A good way to document your work is to record the data directly next to the circuit diagram. Make sure to note the voltage polarity and current direction measured. Organize your data to show at a glance that the values are what you expect. Here I show the predicted value next to the measured value, and in the next column I compute the percent difference. Be sure to note the units and formulas used. Also be consistent when recording significant digits. The DMM usually measures four to five significant digits, so I record at least that many, and I use at least four significant digits in my calculations. If you measured a negative value of voltage <clears throat> when you expect to measure a positive value, then you should check to see that you've set the DMM correctly. Notice here I've incorrectly placed the red probe on the left instead of the right of the 750 kilo ohm resistor. Simply switch the probes and now we read a positive roughly 12 volts, which is the value we expect. Set up the current division circuit of figure 2. Again, try to make the circuit on your breadboard match as much as possible the circuit schematic. To set up the DC power supply to act like an ideal current source, we need to set the voltage limit to higher than we expect to reach, and then we will need to limit the current to 12 milliamp. A common mistake is to set the voltage limit too low. After we build the circuit, I have set up the ammeter to measure the current. Instead of 12 milliamps, I'm measuring only about 4.7 milliamps. So this means that we need to increase the limit of the voltage until we reach the current limit of 12 milliamps. It turns out that we need at least 12 or 13 volts to drive this circuit. By analyzing the circuit schematic, we find that the voltage across the current source is expected to be about 13.3 volts. So we should set the limit of the voltage to be higher than this amount. We can fine tune the current source by adjusting the current limit until we get at least as, as close as possible to 12 milliamps as measured by the DMM.
The principle of measuring current with the ammeter is that you have to place the ammeter in series with the branch that you want to measure so that all the current goes through the ammeter. This requires that you have to break the circuit somewhere and insert the ammeter. Schematically, you can draw a diagram of the ammeter in series. Physically, it's easiest to start with the circuit that is already built, like the schematic. Break the circuit by lifting one end of the resistor. Connect the ammeter to the resistor. The current should be directed to enter the red probe of the ammeter and leave the black probe. Connect the black probe of the ammeter to the circuit to close the loop. In part 2.6, you're going to try to measure the resistance of the short blue colored plastic coated wire that comes in your wiring kit. If you measure the resistance with the ohmmeter, you should get what I got, which is a resistance around 0.081 ohms. This is a pretty small value of resistance, but notice if you connect the two wires together with the blue link missing, you measure a resistance that is about the same value. So the ohmmeter measurement here is obviously not an accurate measurement. In part 2.8, you will build the Wheatstone Bridge following the schematic of figure 3. Use the yellow decade box to adjust the resistance of R4 until the circuit is balanced. Notice the resistance is the addition of all the switches that are in the in position. The bridge is balanced when the voltage the VB is 0. Get as close as you can. Then compute the blue link resistance with the formula derived from the Wheatstone Bridge circuit. You can also use the DMM to make a more accurate measurement of resistance using the four wire technique. Begin by connecting the wires to the blue link like you are measuring resistance normally. Then connect an additional pair of wires from the sense port just to the inside of the wires from the rightmost ports. Activate the four wire button. To complete the pre-lab for lab 3, you're going to analyze two circuits. First, you should analyze the circuit of figure 1 and compute the value of the voltage across each of the resistors in series. Be sure to use the resistance values that you measured from lab 1 so that your predicted values are as close as possible to the values that you will measure in the lab. It's also a good idea to predict the value of the current running through the circuit in series so that you know a reasonable value to set the limit of the voltage supply that you won't overpower the ammeter. Next, analyze the circuit of figure 2, uh, which is a resistor network in parallel. Uh, use current divider to make predictions of the currents going through each of those branches. And again, it's a good idea to predict the value of the voltage across the current source in all the resistors so that you know what a reasonable value to set the limit of your voltage when you're setting up the current source. And uh, be sure to organize all your data in tables and record the formulas you used and the units of the data that you have computed.